extensor alusis longus. The extensor alusis longus is a thin muscle that lies deep at its superior attachments to the fibula and interosseous membrane. It raises to the surface between the tibialis anterior and extensor digitorum longus. The fibularis tertius, the fibularis tertius is a separated part of the extensor digitorum longus which shares its synovial sheet. The extensor digitorum longus and fibularis tertius are fused at their proximal attachments. Anyways, the tendon of the fibularis tertium attaches to the fifth metatarsal, not to a phalanx. The fibularis tertius is not always present. Nerve in the anterior compartment, the deep fibular nerve, the nerve of the anterior compartment is one of the two terminal branches of the common fibular nerve. It arises between the fibularis longus muscle and the neck of the fibula. It accompanies the anterior tibial artery, first between the tibialis anterior and external digitorum longus, and then between the tibialis anterior and external lucis longus. Already in the anterior compartment, the anterior tibial artery supplies structures in the anterior compartment. The smaller terminal branch of the popliteal artery, the anterior tibial artery begins at the inferior border of the popliteus and passes anteriorly through a gap in the superior part of the internal osseous membrane and descends on the anterior surface of the membranes between the tibialis anterior and exterior. Tensor digitorum longus. It ends at the ankle joint midway between the malleoli when where it becomes the dorsalis pedis artery or dorsal artery of the foot. Take a look in your atlas, the dissection of the right leg, right? Or you can see the muscles of the leg and the foot, right? The common fibular nerve in contact with the neck of the fibula. Right. Take a look also the dissection of the anterior compartment of the leg, the muscle and inferior extensor retinaculum are where it separates to display arteries and nerves in the anterior compartment. Right. Take a look at the anterior view and the posterior view of the leg. Right, so you can see what's going on and how everything is arranged. The lateral compartment of the leg is bounded by the lateral surface of the fibula, the anterior and posterior in intermuscular septa, and the crural fascia. The muscles in the lateral compartment contain the fibula longus and brevis muscle. The, the fibula is longus is the longest, the longer and most superficial of the two fibular muscles, and it arises much more superiorly on the body of the fibula. The narrow fibularis longus extends from the head of the fibula to the sole of the foot. Its tendon can be palpated and observed proximally and posterior to the lateral malleolus. When a person stands on one foot, the fibularis longus helps steady the leg on the foot. The fibularis longus is enclosed in a common synovial sheet with the fibularis brevis. The fibularis longus passes inferior to the fibular trochlea on the calcaneus and enters a groove on the anteroinfero aspect of the cuboid bone. It then crosses the sole of the foot joining obliquely and distally to reach its attachment to the first metatarsal and medial cuneiform bones. Fibularis brevis, the fibularis brevis is a fusiform muscle 
that lies deep to the village longbows and true to its name is shorter than its corner in the lateral compartment. Its broad tendon moves the posterior aspect of the lateral malleolus and can be palpated inferior to the lateral malleolus where it lies in a common tendon sheet with the fibularis longus. The narrower tendon of the fibularis longus lies on that of the fibularis brevis and does not contact the lateral malleolus. The tendon of the fibularis brevis can be easily traced to its distal attachment to the borsa of the foot metal arsenal. The tension, the tendons of uh, fibularis longus and brevis are bound down at the malleolus by the superior fibula retinaculum, a band of deep fascia that extends from the tip of the lateral malleolus to the calcaneus. The tendon of the fibularis tertius, a slip or muscle from the fibularis brevis, often attaches to the tendon of the extensor digitorum longus or continuous and attaches to the proximal balance of this tissue. Uh, uh, where the primary function of the fibularis muscle is to resist inversion of the foot, the ankle, and our afforded protection because it is most vulnerable in uh, the inverted position. Right. Um, the nerves in the lateral compartment, the superficial fibular nerve, a branch of the common fibular nerve, is the nerve of the lateral compartment. It supplies the skin on the distal part of uh, the anterior surface of the leg and nearby all the dorsum of the foot. The lateral compartment does not have an artery. The muscles are supplied superiorly by perforating branches of the anterior tibial artery and inferiorly by performing branches of the fibular artery. Right. The posterior compartment of the leg is the largest of the three leg compartments. The, the calf muscles in the posterior compartment are divided into superficial and deep rows by the transverse intermuscular septum. The tibial nerve and posterior tibial vessels supply both divisions of the posterior compartment and wound between the superficial and deep roots of muscle, just deep to the transverse intermuscular septum. Superficial muscle group in the posterior compartment. A gastronomius solius and plantaris forms a powerful muscular mass in the calf of the leg that plantar flexes the foot. The large size of these muscles is a human characteristic that is directly related to our upright uh, stance. These muscles are strong and heavy because they support and move the weight of the body. The three muscles are supplied by the tibial nerve. To, together, the two-headed gastrocnemius and solius form the three-headed triceps surae. Right. This large muscle has a common tendon, the calcaneal tendon, which is also known as Achilles tendon, which attaches to the calcaneus. A superficial calcaneal bursae lies between the skin and the calcaneal tendon, and a deep calcaneal bursae is located between the tendon and the calcaneus. The triceps surae uh, plantar flexes the ankle joint, raising the head, uh, the heel against the body weight, right? Uh, such as when a person is walking dancing and or standing on the tooth. You stroll with the solus but win the long jump with the gastronomies. To test the triceps sure the foot is plant that flex against resistance. Uh, which is also known as standing on the toes in which case uh, the body weight uh, gravity provides resistance <coughs> if acting. Normally, the calcaneal tendon and triceps surrey can be seen in palpate. <coughs> the gastrocnemius, uh, the most superficial muscle in the posterior compartment, forms part of the prominent of the calf. It is a fusiform two-headed, two-joint muscle within a medial head 
slightly large and extending more distally than its lateral head. The heads come together at the inferior margin of the popliteal fossae, where they form the inferolateral and inferomedial boundaries of this fossae, because these fibers are mainly vertical. Contracting of the gastrocnemius produce rapid movements during running and jumping. Although the gastrocnemius act and both the knee and the ankle joints cannot exert its full power on both joints at the same time. The solute deep to the gastrocnemius is powerful. It is a large flat muscle that was given its name because of its resemblance to the soul, a flat fish, its fiber slope in medially. The solutes can be palpated on each side of the gastronomius when the subject is standing on the tiptoes. The, tip the solutes act with the gastronomius in plantar flexion, the ankle joint. It does not act on the knee joint. The solus is an anti-gravity muscle that contracts alternately with the extensor muscle of the leg to maintain balance. It is a strong but relatively slow plantar flexor of the ankle joint. The plantaris, the plantaris is a small muscle with a short belly and long thin tendon. This vestigial muscle of the absent acts with the gastrocnemius. It has been uh, proposed to be an organ of proprioception for the larger plantar flexors. It has been found to have a high density of muscle spindles uh, because of its minor role. The plantar tendon can be uh, removed from grafting. Uh, right. So, take a look in the atlas, right? Uh, the calcaneus pulsaris, the venous return from leg, the rupture calcaneus tendon. Take a look of, at the posterior muscle attachments right of the posterior leg. The deep uh, muscle group in the posterior compartment, four muscles comprise the deep group in the posterior compartment of the leg. The popliteus, the flexor digitorum longus, the flexor hallucis longus, and the tibialis posterior. The popliteus act on the knee joint, whereas the other muscles act on the ankle and foot joints. The, the popliteus is a thin triangular muscle that forms the inferior part of the floor of the popliteal fossa. Its tendon adhering to the articular capsule of the knee joint lies between the fibrous capsule and the synovial membrane. The popliteus is a flexor of the, the knee joint. When a person is standing with a knee uh, partly flexed, the popliteus contracts to assist the posterior cruciate ligament, preventing anterior displacement of the femur on the tibia. The popliteus bursa lies deep to the popliteus tendon. When standing with the knees locked in the fully extended position, the popliteus act to rotate the femur laterally five degrees on the tibia juice, unlocking the knee to that flexion can occur. When the foot is off the ground and the knee is flexed, popliteus can rotate the tibia medially beneath the femoral condyles. The flexor digitorum longus is more than the flexor allusis longus, even though it moves four digits. It passes diagonally into the sole of the foot. Superficial to the tendon of the flexor allusis longus and divides into four tendons, which pass to the distal phalanges of the lateral four digits. To test the flexor digital longus, distal phalanges of the lateral four toes are flexed against resistance. If they are acting normally, the tendon of the toes can be seen and palpated. The flexor allusis longus is the powerful push of muscle during walking, running, and jumping. It provides uh, much of the spring to the step. The tendon of the muscle passes posterior to the distal end of the tibia and occupies a set of glue on the posterior surface of the talus, which is continuous with the glue of the plantar surface of the system columntali. The tendon to the 
then crosses deep to the uh, tendon of the flexor digitorum longus in the sole of the foot as it passes to the distal phalanx of the great toe. The tendon runs between two sesamoid bones and the tendons of the flexor allosis brevis. These bones protect the tendon from the pressure of the head of the first metatarsal bone to test the flexor longus. The terminal phalanx of the great toe is flexed against resistance. If it is acting normally, the tendon can be seen and palpated. The tibialis posterior, deepest muscle in the posterior compartment lies between the flexor digitorum longus and flexor allosis longus in the same plane as the tibia and fibula. Attaches primarily to the avicular bone, uh, but has attachments to other torsos and metatarsals. Uh, uh, to test the tibialis posterior, the foot is inverted against resistance with the foot in a slight plantar flexion. If it is acting normally, the tendon can be seen and palpated posterior to the medial malleolus. Nerve in the posterior compartment. The tibial nerve L4, L5, and S1 to S3 is the larger of the two terminal branches of the sciatic nerve. It leaves the propletal fossae between the head of the gastrocnemius and supplies of muscles in the posterior compartment of the legs. The tibial nerve descends in the medial plane of the fibula deep to the solus. At the ankle, the nerve lies between the tendons of flexor allusis longus and the flexor digitorum longus posterior inferior to the medial malleolus, the tibial nerve divides into the medial and lateral plantar nerve. A branch of the tibial nerve, the medial subcutaneous nerve, usually unites with a communicating branch of the common tibular nerve to form the sural nerve. This nerve supplies the skin of the lateral and posterior part of the inferior third of the leg and the lateral side of the foot. Particular branches of the tibial nerve supply the knee joint and medial calcaneal branches supply the skin of the heel. The arteries of the uh, posterior compartment, the posterior tibial artery, the largest terminal branch of the popliteal artery, provides the main blood supply to the foot. It begins at the uh, distal uh, border of the popliteus muscle and passes deep to the origin of the solus. After giving off the fibular artery, its largest branch, the posterior tibial artery passes inferomedially on the posterior surface of the tibialis posterior. During its dis descent, it is accompanied by the tibial nerve and vein. The posterior tibial artery runs posterior to the medial malleolus, from which it is separated by the tendons of the tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus, inferior to the medial malleolus. It runs between the tendons of the flexor allosinus longus and flexor digitorum longus, deep to the flexor retinaculum and the origin of the abductor allusis, the posterior tibial artery divides into medial and lateral plantar uh, arteries. The fibular artery is the largest and most important branch of the tibial artery, because inferior to the distal border of the popliteus and the tendinosus or of the solus. Descends obliquely toward the fibula and passes along its medial side, usually within the flexor allusis. Longus. The fibular artery gives muscular branches to the popliteus and other muscles in the posterior and lateral compartments of the leg. It also supplies a nutrient artery to the fibula. The fibula artery usually uh, pierces the interosseous. Take a look in your atlas, the second layer of plantar muscles, the arteries of the knee, leg, and foot, the distal section of the lower leg, and the foot. Right. Take a look at the posterior aspects of the Knee and uh, we're saying that pierces the interosseous membrane and passes to the dorsum of the foot. 
where it enacts the Moses with the arcuate artery. The circumflex fibular artery arises from the posterior tibial artery at the knee and passes laterally over the neck of the fibula to the anastomosis around the knees. The nutrient artery of the tibia, the largest nutrient artery in the body, arises from the posterior tibial artery near its origin. It pierces the tibialis posterior to which it supplies branches and enters the nutrients foramen in the proximal third of the posterior surface of the tibia. The calcanean artery supply the heel and a malleolar branch join the network of vessels on the medial malleolus. The foot. The ankle refers to the angle between the leg and foot and the ankle joint. The foot distant to the leg supports the weight of the body and has an important role in locomotion. The skeleton of the foot consists of seven tarsal bones, five metatarsals, and 14 phalanges. The foot and its bones are divided into three parts, the heel foot, the talus, and calcaneus, the mid foot, navicular, cuboid, and cuneiforms, and the fore foot, metatarsals, and phalanges. The clinical importance of the food is indicated by an estimate that physicians devote 20% of their practice to food problems and the practice of podiatry is concerned with the diagnosis and treatment of disease, injuries, and abnormalities of the food. The part of the food facing the floor or ground is the plantar surface, which also known as the sole of the food. And the part facing superiorly is the dorsal surface, which is known also as dorsum of the foot. The part of the sole of the foot underlying the calcaneus is the heel, and the part of the sole underlying the heads of the metatarsals is the bone of the foot. The great two toe is the allux or first digit, the small toe is the fifth digit, right? The skin of the foot. The skin of the dorsal surface of the foot is much thinner and less sensitive than skin on the plantar surface. The subcutaneous tissue is close deep to the dorsal skin, therefore edema, right? Or swelling, right? Is most marked over the surface, especially anterior to and around the media malleolus. The skin over the major wave bearing areas of the sole of the foot, the heel lateral margin of foot, ball or great toe is thick. The subcutaneous tissue in the sole is more fibrous than in other areas of the foot. Fibrous sets that divide this tissue into uh, fat filled areas, making it a soft absorbing pad especially over the heel. The fibrous septa also anchor the skin to the underlying plantar aponeurotis, improving the grip of the sole. The plantar skin is hairless and sweat glands are durous. The entire sole of the foot is sensitive, uh, which is known as stickish. The deep fascia of the foot, the deep fascia is thin on the dorsum of the foot where it is continuous with the inferior extensor retinaculum. Over the lateral and posterior aspect of the foot, the deep fascia is continuous with the plantar fascia. Deep fascia of the sole, the thick central part of this fascia forms the strong plantar aponeurosis longitudinally arranged a band of dense fibrous connective tissue which has a thick central part and weaker medial and lateral parts. The plantar fascia as as follows holds the part of the foot together, helps protect the plantar surface of the foot from injury, and helps support the longitudinal arches of the foot. The plantar aponeurosis arises posterior from the calcaneus and divides into five bands, 
that splits to enclose the digital pendants that attach to the margins of the fibrous digital sheets and the system wall bones of the gray third. From the margins of the center part of the plant uh, part, upon a rosy's vertical septa extend extend deeply to form three compartments of the sole of the foot. Right. And these are the medial compartment containing the abductor allusius, flexor allusius brevis, and medial plantar nerve and muscles. The central compartment containing the flexor digitorum brevis, flexor digitorum longus, quadratus plantae, lumbricalis, proximal part of the tendon flexor allusius longus, and the lateral plantar nerve and vessels, and the lateral compartment containing the abductor and flexor DGT uh, minimi brevis. Uh, the muscles, nerves, and vessels in the soul are described right? according to this compartment, right? Uh, for uh, matters of digestion, uh, layers than by components. Right. Let us just stop right here and let us continue a little bit later with a little bit more.